And I want you to know in no time we'll be celebrating the last Sunday of 2020. Amen? Now the question is, what are we going to do between the first Sunday and the last Sunday? Like Sister Lyra said, preach the gospel. We're all alive this morning. Amen? God has given us life. And the life that the Lord has given to us, we got to make good use of it. We got to preach the gospel. And that's what we're going to do in 2020, between the two first and the last Sunday. Just hardly a few days ago, we celebrated 31st night. And we entered into the new year on the first day of 2020. So to all of us, January 1st was our new year, am I right? I want you to know that technically speaking, it's actually not our new year. It is what we look at in the Julian calendar or in the Gregorian calendar. We look at 1st 2020 as New Year. But as far as we are concerned, believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, that has not been our New Year. Okay? So you may say, well, Pastor, what are you trying to talk to me today? That's not my New Year. Well, I want you to know that our New Year fell in the month of October. And so I want to take you back to three months. January, December, November, October. And I want to show you from the Bible what are our benefits when we celebrate New Year biblically or from the scriptures. Before I take you to October, I want to take you back to what the Bible has to say in the book of Leviticus in chapter 23. We're not going to read those verses. But the Lord said to Moses, now this is where a lot of people get a little confused between the beginning, a new beginning, and a new year. The Lord said to Moses, he sent Moses to Egypt. You know, Moses was in the Midian desert for almost 40 years after having left Egypt. He sends him back to Egypt, and he says to Moses, I want you to bring my people who are in bondage, my people who are enslaved, my people who are under a severe curse of poverty and sickness, etc. I want you to go there to Egypt and bring them out of Egypt and move them to the promised land. Now, for that to happen, you had to have the hand of God. Other is impossible. We had to have some miracles take place. And so Moses comes to Egypt and we know the story, you know, the various plagues that happen. And finally we come to the last plague. And then the Lord said to Moses, this last plague, you're ready to make the exodus. But what I want you to do, Moses, I want you to apply the blood after you slaughter the animal, put the blood of the sacrificed animal on the doorposts and the lintons of your door. But Moses, when you're doing that, you got to do it on the 14th of Nisan. Could be our March or April. 14th of Nisan. Now, reading those scriptures, the Lord says, this is a new beginning for you. So, Moses now does what the Lord told him to do. Put the blood on the doorposts and the lintons of the door. Now, while this was happening, there is a verse in the Bible, and from that verse, there's a word in the Bible, in that verse. It says in the book of Genesis, in chapter 1 and verse 14, he said, I'm giving you seasons. Now, when you look at that word seasons, it's not summer, winter, monsoon. No, it's not talking about that. It's talking about a moedim, that's a Hebrew word. The word moedim means an appointed time, and at that appointed time, God says, where I will personally show up. So, on the 14th of Nisan, 
was a wonderful day for God himself because that was God's appointed time for his people in Egypt and that is when God personally came down because the scripture says when he came down he never allowed the destroyer to come into any door where the blood was applied. The destroyer had to pass over. So that is when the children of Israel left the house of bondage and they came into the wilderness on their journey to the promised land. Amen? So God looks at that event that took place on that day as a very special day and God was excited about that because it was on that day he delivered his people from bondage to freedom. Can you say amen? That was a special day. Now, looking at that verse of scripture, I'm looking at two people over here, very, very important people, with a very, very important assignment. One is Moses, the other one is Joshua. Now, Moses is the type of Jesus. Why? Because he comes into Egypt. He delivers the people from Egypt, from bondage, from slavery, from sin, from sickness, from curse, by the shed blood, and he takes them out from Egypt and journeys along with them all across to the promised land and comes to the, to the threshold of the promised land. He turns around to Joshua and he says to Joshua, if you read the scriptures, he says that he laid his hand upon Joshua in public and a portion of the spirit of Moses came upon Joshua. And then Moses said to Joshua, he said, now my job is over, I'm going to go away. I'm going to die, I'm going to be buried, and I'm going to go away. But from this point, your job begins. So I'm looking at Moses as a type of Jesus, and Joshua as a type of the church. Are you listening, church? So God Almighty, I mean Jesus Christ, finished his job. What did he do? Take the bondage. Take us out of slavery. Take us out of curse. And bring us, you know, from the house of bondage through the Red Sea. You know, through the Red Sea is a type of baptism and is a type of new birth. It's a birth canal over there. And so he brings us and brings us almost to the threshold of the promised land. And Jesus Christ says, he says, now I'm going to go away, but I want you to preach the gospel and I want you to lead my people into the promised land. Are you with me, church? So now, what do I do? What is my commitment over here? What is my responsibility? I know that Jesus Christ did everything that he had to do. There's nothing more that he's going to do. Now, I have the spirit of Jesus Christ in me. Now it becomes my responsibility, it becomes our responsibility, my brothers and sisters. We have 1.2 billion people, the harvest is big. We are no more ought to be in the minority. Amen? So when you meet the minority commission, tell him you're not. If we have Jesus Christ, you're on the majority. Can the church say amen? amen? So now it becomes my responsibility as Joshua's responsibility. Do you know that Joshua was a warrior? He was a commander? Even so, we are warriors this morning. We're not weaklings. Amen? We're not weakling ducklings. We are warriors. Why we are warriors? We have the lion of the tribe of Judah on the inside of us, and he rose. Oh, my brother, my sister, we are leading people to the promised land. We are taking people to where they have to go. Amen? So that's what the Lord is calling us today. And so, that's what we have to do. Now, on the Feast of Passover, it started almost 1,500 years before Jesus Christ. So, for 1,500 years, every year, without fail, they celebrated the Feast of Passover. Now, when the Jews were celebrating, according to the book of Hebrews, it says that each time they celebrated the Feast of Passover, it was bringing to their remembrance 
that one day the Passover lamb will come. So it's reminding them of the Passover lamb that was to come. But at the same time, it was reminding them that they were sinners and they needed the blood to cover their sin. And then they had to do it the next year because they realized that the presence of sin was still there. It was not removed. It was there. And that's why they had to do it the next year. But then at the time of Jesus Christ, and when Jesus Christ was about to die, he died exactly on the day of the Feast of Passover. See, sometimes we forget the Jewish customs and tradition. We got to follow that. Because until and unless we follow that, you don't understand anything. So on the day of the Feast of Passover, is when the priest was in the temple about to sacrifice the Passover lamb on the day of the Feast of Passover, Jesus Christ was suspended on the cross over there. And according to 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 8, it says that he is our Passover lamb. And on the cross, we know he mentioned seven words on the cross, very important words. But the last word was, it is finished. And the moment he uttered those words and says, it is finished, my brother, my sister, it was actually finished. That's when our Passover lamb died. And when he died, we want to thank God this morning, is because when he died by the shedding of his blood, we were not covered for one year as it was normally done according to the Jewish custom, but I want you to know, we are covered by the blood of the Lamb forever. Amen. Amen? And what happened was even more glorious. Not only have we been covered, but the presence of our sin was removed. Our sins were blotted by the blood of Jesus Christ. So today we know our sins are not just covered, but it's removed. It's no more. This is what happened at the time of the Feast of Passover. And that is the beginning of new things that was to happen. His blood cleansed us. Now, at the same time, when he died on the cross, and he said, it is finished, he was in the grave for three days. Am I right? What do you think was happening in the grave for three days? Well, he was not just resting in the grave. A couple of things happened. And I'll just tell you one thing that happened. Now, while he was in the grave, you know, we all know that he went to hell, he went to paradise, he preached the gospel to uh, the people that were waiting over there. And at his resurrection, when he rose, the dead also rose with him. But remember, on that resurrection morning, early in the morning, even before the sun could rise, Mary comes to the grave. And when she came to the grave, you know, when she recognized Jesus, thinking that he was the gardener, later on a spiritual eyes opened, she recognized Jesus, and immediately she fell on her knees, and she was about to hold the feet of Jesus as an act of worship. Jesus said to her, he says, no, don't touch me. In other words, what he actually meant, you know, not, not don't touch me, don't stop me. I've got another very important job to do. But you go to my brethren and tell them later on during the day, I will meet up with them. And so Mary dashed up. You know, she went running. What Jesus Christ did was, his blood was collected. And I think it could have been the work of the Holy Spirit. Collected the blood of Jesus, placed it in his hand, and now he looks as the great high priest. He is the great high priest. He ascended into heaven. Now listen, my brother, my sister. At the same time, you had a tabernacle which was in Jerusalem. They slaughtered the animal. They take the blood of that animal and go into the Holy of Holies and apply the blood on the mercy seat over there. But that mercy seat was not for the blood of Jesus Christ. There was another mercy seat that was reserved where he had to apply his blood and that was in heaven. He takes his blood and he ascends into heaven. 
and he applied his blood on the mercy seat. And according to Hebrews chapter 12, uh, chapter 9 and verse 12, it says, Having obtained eternal redemption for us by applying his blood on the mercy seat. And then he comes down. Now the job is complete. Amen? Now let me stop over there and let me jump into something else. Let's proceed. Now we have come to 2020. According to people, it's the first or a new year, according to the Julian calendar. Now we are celebrating, yes, we celebrated the uh, you know, 1st of January, and we know it's a new year, it's the beginning of another year, and we're so excited about it. But I want you to know that our new year started in, at the Feast of Rosh Hashanah, which is the Feast of Trumpets. So as believers, we're celebrating the 1st of January, but I need to take you back into Rosh Hashanah, because that's our new year. Now, if you read the scriptures, the Lord is telling, you know, apart from all the feasts that's to be celebrated, Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruit, Pentecost, and then you come to Rosh Hashanah, which is the feast, feast of blowing, or the Feast of Trumpets. Amen? So, at the Feast of Rosh Hashanah, which was, which was celebrated in the month of October, which actually we should be celebrating, I want you to know there are three things that happen at Rosh Hashanah. And let me tell you what are the three things, and you're going to be blessed, because that is for you as well. Number one, as the Jews are celebrating, and even as they get into the synagogue to celebrate Rosh Hashanah, which, which the Bible says is a new year. It's known as the end of the year. It's also a civil new year for the Jews. Now that's at Rosh Hashanah. During that time, there are three sections which is followed. Number one, we have what is called Milkayot. It's a, it's, it's a Hebrew word. It means that when the Jews are celebrating New Year, it's a Moedim. It's a time when God himself comes down and places his name over the people over there. And I believe, my brother, my sister, I want you to know, if we are going to look at it from that angle, God is placing his name upon you this morning. Can you say amen, church? So what is happening during a time of this first word that I just mentioned to you, which is Melchonot. It means God is sovereign. There is no name that is higher than the name of Yahweh. Can I have a better amen for that? There's no one as powerful as Yahweh. He is sovereign. And our sovereign God looks over us this morning. Our sovereign God is running the universe, not NASA. Our God. He is named the stars by name. And if you look at the stars, you can never count it if you have another million years to live. But He has named every star by name. And not only that, my brother, my sister, he knows each one of us by name. Thank God for that. And not only that, he says, not a hair drops from your head without me knowing. He says, if the sparrows in the field don't sow or reap, but yet they are being taken care of, how much more would your father, who is in heaven, will take care of you and me? Can you say amen? amen? I don't care what crisis we are going through, difficulties we are going through, or how hard we could be tested. I don't care. But I want you to know this morning, your God is sovereign. He knows what you are going through. He will make a way of escape. You know, sometimes it's so hard, it's so difficult 
for us to go through this kind of a testing and try, you know, trying period. My brother, my sister, it's so hard, it's so difficult. But the good news is our God is sovereign. Very few amens I'm getting. He will take care of us and he will protect us because his name is above every other name. No one stands besides him. He stands alone in awesomeness, in power, in majesty, in glory, in splendor. Hallelujah. Jews are celebrating the sovereign God. Secondly is Zigronot. Sounds funny, these names, but that's a Jewish name. The word Zigronot means to remember or remembrance. God remembers his covenant. We may not remember the covenant that we made with God, but he remembers his covenant that he made with his church. And my Bible says he will never go against his covenant, nor will he alter it. He will keep up to his covenant. God remembers his promises. As God promised you something, don't think God has forgotten. No, in due time, He will show up. He remembers His promise. You know, sometimes I begin to think, Lord, what did He promise me last year? I'm trying to rack my brains. What did He promise me in the month of June, in the month of August? And we're racking our brains. You know, let's not do that. I've got a book full of promises here. It's yours. Amen? Just speak a promise and say, Lord, you promised this. You know, he said, I promise to make you the head and not the tail. Yes, Lord, I'm taking you at your word. Because you said you are God that never forgets. You always remember your promise. So the Jews are there, excited. They are remembering the promise of God. And saying, God, you're a covenant-keeping God. And they are celebrating their new year. It starts at the very beginning of the year. And I want you to know that every promise and every covenant that the Lord promised you, my brother, my sister, it started all over again from the month of October. When you're celebrating Rosh Hashanah, the new year. And the third one, is shofarat. The meaning of the word shofarat is when the shofar is blown. It's blown on the day of the Feast of Trumpets. Amen? Now this word shofarat comes from Genesis chapter 22 when Abraham was putting a son Isaac on the altar and then he turned around and he found a ram whose horns were caught in a thicket. So that is, is symbolically speaking, the ram, the horn of the ram symbolically speaking is, you know, sounding the shofar or blowing the shofar. It's reminding God that whatever you said is what you'll keep up to. The covenant that you made, you will keep up to. And at the same time, it's a shout of victory. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. It is a day, Feast of Trumpets, was celebrated in the month of October. When that feast was celebrated on that particular day in October, I want you to have something in mind. That was the exact same day God made Earth. That was the birthday of planet Earth. Amen. One year later, it was the exact same day where God made Adam. Adam was made. God blew into his nostrils the breath of life and he became a living word blowing again. Blowing in the nostrils the breath of life and he became a living soul. My brother, my sister, God never looked at Adam and looked at him and said, okay, Adam, I'm going to you know, be six feet away from you, and I'm going to say, <sighs> no, he never did that. You got to know how Adam was made. God came to this man that was on the floor over there, you know, a piece of clay, and then he was like a piece of flesh, lifeless flesh. God Almighty 
put his mouth to the mouth of Adam. Are you listening, church? And what God was doing, it was not nostrils. The book of Genesis said, bleed into it was nostrils. No, it's not nostrils. It was mouth to mouth. He put his mouth in the mouth of Adam. And what he did was, he took his spirit and put it into Adam. And Adam became a living soul. That is the first Adam. And it's the same after that. You and I have the Spirit of God in us. Remember Jesus Christ, before he can ascend and go into heaven, he called his disciples together. <sighs> he breathed upon them and said, receive the Holy Ghost. We have received the Holy Ghost through the Ruach of God, the breath of God. Amen? So that was the first day when Adam was created. That was the first day when the earth was created. That was on the same day in the book of Genesis when the ark of Noah rested on Mount Ararat after the flood receded. Amen? That was the first day. And so God now comes and he talks to the Jews and he says, now I want you guys to celebrate New Year. It's a new beginning. So not first, even though we celebrate first, but our New Year starts in Rosh Hashanah. Amen? So we are excited about it. Now, apart from that, this is 2020, am I right? Not 2019. Now, if you would go to the Hebrew letters, and Hebrew has 22 letters, so you go to the 11th letter, which is exactly in the middle, and the 11th letter in Hebrew is a kaf. C-A-P-H. Calf. It appears to be like a bet. Now, if you take that calf, you check it in the Hebrew, it has a numerical value. Every alphabet of Hebrew has a numerical value. And everything is important. The numerical value for calf is 20. Now, if this is 20, 20, you have two calves. Now, in the Hebrew, whenever you see two that is repeated at the same time, it says there is something very important. So, 20, one calf, 20, the other calf, 20 plus 20, two calves. Now, I did not stop. Over. I said, okay, let me check up and see what more. And then I found out that every alphabet is pictorial. So, the picture form for calf his hand. Now what I'm saying this morning is prophetic and I want you to listen to me carefully. It's a hand. So when I see that hand, immediately the message that I got and the message that you're getting this morning that throughout 2020, my brother, my sister, you are not journeying alone. It's the hand of God that takes you through. Amen. God is taking you through this morning. So which means this year is a year of victory. Amen. This year is fabulous. Amen. This year is going to be wonderful. Amen. Why? I'm not walking alone. It's the hand of God that's taking me to where I have to be. He is taking me this morning. Amen? Amen? Not only does it have a hand symbol, but it also has the wings of a bird. And I want you to know this morning that you're being covered by the wings of God Almighty. Let's go to Psalm 91 and we'll have a little more insight in this. This is verse 4. And it's such a prophetic psalm also for 2020. For ye shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler under his wings. 2020, my brother, my sister, you are coming under the wings of God Almighty. And when you come under the wings of God Almighty, tell me where the predator is. Oh, I can't find you. The devil can't find you. The devil will never find you. He can huff and puff, but he cannot blow you down. Why? You're under the wings of 
are. You're protected by God himself. He spreads his wings like how a mother hen would spread her wings and protect her chicks from the predator. My brother, my sister, we are in the safest place. And I want you to say amen to that. Amen. Shield and buckler. He is your shield and buckler. Listen to verse 5. And thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the harrow that flies by day. Of the terror by night, my brother, my sister, not only terror by night, but you have terrorists by day. Thou shalt not be afraid. On Friday, we had uh, uh, America that bombed uh, or killed uh, one of the uh, top chief uh, military officer of Iran, Suleiman. He was killed. Along with him, two other leaders. And all, along with them, another 20 were killed. And today, Iran is standing and they are challenging. They are saying, we are going to take revenge. And they are all ready. So, and, and uh, Donald Trump on the other side, he is saying, we are ready for anything. You want to come? Come on, we are ready for it. So, we can see these two nations now, you know, coming to the point where they are going to attack one another. Now, if this is to happen, and it may happen, but if this is to happen, my brother, my sister, I want to know, know <coughs> at the same time, you know, we have the presence of Iran in Syria. They are waiting to attack Israel. And they said, America and Israel is our target. Now, if that is to happen, we're going to have Russia, because they are close allies to, to Iran. They're going to support Iran, and they can't stand America. So this is an opportunity for them to attack America. Now, if that is to happen, China gets involved. And then Lebanon gets involved. And then you get the Middle Eastern countries getting involved. So I'm looking at this year, if it should happen, and it looks like it's going to happen, I'm looking at this year as the third world war about to start. In fact, some of the analysts have been saying it. This is third world war about to start. So, when this starts, this war is going to be used by nuclear and chemical. Now, when there's nuclear and chemical, the wind carries the viruses. It'll sweep over India. Now, if that's to happen, Psalm 91 has good news for us. Amen. What does Psalm 91 say? It says, uh, for the arrow that flies by day, arrow that flies by day, you know, it's like arrows. But verse 6 says, No pestilence walketh in darkness, no for the destruction that wastes at noonday shall fall on us. No pestilence. That word no pestilence is diseases and plagues. We are not going to be victims. So, by put on there. Which means don't be afraid. Can you say amen? Daromat. Don't be afraid. And then verse 7 says, A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but nothing shall come close to us. <laughs> Only with your eyes you shall behold and see the re reward of the wicked. Why? Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even a most high, thy residing place, or thy habitation. And then it goes on to say, And no evil shall come near a nigh, no plague will come near a nigh dwelling. He will give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy, uh, thy ways, and they shall bear thee up in thy hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. And thou shalt tread upon the lion, the adder, the young lion, and the dragon, thou shalt trample under feet. Why? Because you have set your love upon the Lord. Amen. Say amen, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you excited this morning? And then, 2020. You got to add both the figures. 20 plus 20 is how much? 40. You know, the figure of 40 is always new beginning. Genesis 13, I mean, uh, the, the Old Testament closes at 39. Matthew starts the 48th book, new beginning. I believe we are a new generation 
about to see a new beginning. And last of all, the word Rosh Hashanah also means Yamin Narohim, which means a day of hall. I wish I can continue, but let me stop over here. The day of hall simply means when you're celebrating Rosh Hashanah, New Year, the Jewish New Year, or the biblical New Year, when you're celebrating that, you also need to come to a place where it becomes a day of awe, which means you are introspecting into your life. Whatever I did that was not right in the old year will not be repeated in the new year. Can you say amen, church? It's a new beginning. It's a new start. It's a new era for us, for believers. God is setting us upon a platform this morning. And I believe and I, I prophesy this, that we the church are in a transition period. From the old to the new. From old blessings to new blessings. And better blessings. Are you looking forward to that? Let's all stand please. Being the first Sunday of 2020, I hope it's not going to be the last Sunday for us. In the sense, we're going to be here every Sunday. Amen? Amen. We're going to be here every Sunday. Remember, Arun read that verse out. What was the last verse? From Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. It says, don't forsake yourself in the assembling of the saints. We're not going to forsake. Because I want you to know, when you come here in this gathering, you're rubbing shoulders with one another. And there's a corporate anointing. If we are isolated, you can't get what you can get here. There's a corporate anointing. The 120 in the upper room had a corporate anointing. They were all filled with boldness, with fire from the Holy Ghost. So we wait for Sunday to tap into that anointing so that we can survive for the next one week before we come back again. You don't come back one Sunday, you're flat. You're flat as a tire. Amen? Your, car, your vehicle cannot move. With a flat tire, you cannot move. So we need to come to get pumped up. We need to come to get filled. We need to come to get strengthened. So don't forsake yourself. And that verse says, especially when you know the day of the Lord is soon coming. Father, this morning, we thank you for your word this morning. I believe a God word. It's a word that you've given to us to take us through a God. Lord, we are out in the world, but we are not of this world. But a God, the world system outside is bad. Lord, it's terrible. And we are just in the beginning of bad days. Worst days are ahead of God. But Lord, no matter how worse it gets on the outside, it gets better on the inside. And therefore, God, we pray, Lord, even as we looked at that word of God, Yamin Norahim, which means we introspect. And Lord, we come out of God of things that we would have been indulging in in 2019. Lord, things that we did was not pleasing in your sight. Father, come out of God this morning and deliver life of God afresh. Lord, for us to sustain this God. Bless us and cover us with your blood. For we give you the praise, the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide upon each one of us this morning and always. Amen. The Lord bless you.